Today's lesson is on reasoning, and there are a couple types of reasoning, and we are going to start with inductive reasoning. The definition that I'm given for inductive reasoning is the process of observing data, recognizing patterns, and then making generalizations based on those patterns. You guys have done this all your life. You see your mom cooking at the stove when you're really small, there's steam coming out of the pot, you know that based on prior experience that you really shouldn't go next to that stove and grab that pot. Uh, that is something that little kids learn very quickly. Um, also, let's just say, I love the carnival. I love corn dogs. If I go to the carnival and get a corn dog and then jump on this spinning ride that's called the Gravitron that you stick to the walls, right? And, well, I don't feel so good afterwards. If I, if I go the next year, get that corn dog, ride the Gravitron, and then throw up, well, the following year, I am going to get a corn dog, ride the grab, and do it again until I start recognizing that there's a pattern here and I can make a generalization based on those patterns. That generalization may be totally wrong. It may be something else that's going on, but if year after year after year, corn dog, gravitron, and then throwing up, then I am going to make is what is called a conjecture. A conjecture is that generalization based on the patterns. I'm going to make a conjecture that it is the combination of the corn dog and the gravitron that makes me sick. So let's look at this with mathematics. As a matter of fact, this is nothing new. The ancient Egyptians and Babylonians developed procedures for 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 their measurement by after a lot of experience with an observation of what happened, okay? So they were able to remark their lands and one passed it on to another. They didn't know the mathematics they were doing necessarily, but they knew it worked and they knew that we could do this thing over and over again, okay? So if I do something like, if I say two plus two equals four, if I say six plus eight equals uh, 14, and maybe 10 plus 6 equals 16. You're thinking, well, nothing big deal. Well, what if I change it to, to negative 2 plus 6 and I get a 4? Or negative 10 plus negative 100 equals negative 110. What pattern am I showing here? Think about it. What, have I, what did I use? Well, I used integers, yes. I, I summed them together, and what always happened? That they came out to be another integer, and that integer happened to be even. So you might make a conjecture that an even integer summed with another even integer, integer, will equal yet another even integer. And that's a conjecture. I did not show that, I, I don't know, I didn't test every integer. I'm making a conjecture, conjecture based on the limited patterns that I have. If I want to show that it has to work, then that's gonna be a different type of reasoning. That type of reasoning is called deductive reasoning. And deductive reasoning is the process of showing that certain statements follow logically from agreed upon assumptions and proven facts. So let's take our example that we have. We have evens and evens. And in algebra, we can use variables. I'm going to say the 2a is equal to the first even integer. And how about 2b is equal to the second even integer? I don't think I'm going to, you know, lose you now because you know that if it's an even integer, it can be written as 2 times something, where a is some, uh, an element of some integer, right? Uh, and 
B is the element of the set of integers also. Somehow I can write that, uh, no matter what. If, okay, now, what are we doing? We're summing the, the even integers. We're going 2A plus 2B. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm rewriting that as 2A plus 2B. So that's my given information. Then I'm going to break that down. We'll just say that, that's 2A is the same thing as A plus A. And that's B plus B. That's the opposite of combining like terms. But we could, we could remind that as combining like terms. This looks like a lot like algebra, right? And then I am going to say that that's A plus B plus A plus B. I'm moving around. That's the commutative property of addition. Then I can do th something like this. That's A plus B, parentheses, plus the quantity of A plus B, parentheses. And that's the associative property of addition. And then finally, I can say that that is the same thing as writing 2 times the quantity A plus B. And that's combining like terms also. And at this point, I would like to say that, well, now I have showed that if you take two even integers and you sum them together, the, the sum of them will be also even because it's 2 times those smaller integers, and so this must also be integer. So now I have showed that this must be true. Now notice, uh, I used a process showing certain statements follow logically. I, I have no problem. This is what you did last year. And then from agreed upon assumptions, these are my agreed upon assumptions, right? These properties, these associates, this is what we're gonna do later in the year. But I will intermediately do some deductive reasoning and then we'll do some inductive reasoning to show uh, how the geometry patterns work. All right. Finally, let's look at some, some patterns, some sequences. So the first sequence, negative five, negative two, one, four. And so let's ask ourselves what would be the next three terms. Okay, so we start looking at this, negative five to negative two. In algebra, we start looking for the common difference. And that one is positive three, negative two, positive three, one to four, three. So I'm guessing that that is gonna be three to go to seven. Another three would be 10. Another three would be 13. What type of reasoning did I use to get 7, 10, 13? And you're right. Yes, that I did, used inductive reasoning because I looked for the looked at the pattern. I looked for a generalization which that there was common. It was it was the first difference of positive three. So I'm going to keep on going. Notice that these don't necessarily have to be the truth. There are other patterns that start off with these first four terms and then it changes. So inductive reasoning can lead you astray. Deductive reasoning would help me write the rule and we are going to do that in the next video. But if you want, if you're curious about this, uh, that three shows up as three in and of course this I am going to help you out this is always my first term second term third term fourth term fifth term we'll do this more in time so that's three in uh, minus eight and that's a linear pattern right this one plus six plus eight plus ten Maybe plus 12 gives me, uh, what, 40? Plus 14 would be 54. Now, that's not linear. The difference is growing. Of course, the second difference is plus 2. But 
We will work on those next time. And if you're curious, that would be n times the quantity n plus 3. If that's the first term, second term, third term, fourth term. That's how I, that's how I roll. All right. Uh, don't worry too much. We'll be working with these uh, in the future. And your job is to understand the difference between inductive and deductive. Inductive will tell me what the next terms were. Deductive uses the algebra to help me find out the rule and such. Okay. See you next time.